When the Council Ministers introduced the Government Plan in November 2019, we set out an ambitious programme to meet the five key pledges in our common strategic policy. At that time, we never could have anticipated the health and economic crisis that would engulf the global community in the form of COVID-19. And it's no exaggeration to say that coronavirus has provided the most significant challenge to our island for a generation. There have been two distinct emergencies to face, the immediate healthcare crisis and the resulting global economic downturn. We've had to work quickly and find ways to meet those challenges as they arrived in our island. And I do not doubt that we will feel the impacts of the pandemic for many years and maybe even decades to come. But the necessary focus on the emergency response doesn't mean that we've abandoned the core work of government and our wider obligations. Despite the pandemic, we've made strong headway, having clarity on where we are in the programme of meeting our ambitions. And our sixth month report sets out in detail the progress we've made. And while some programmes have been deferred because of the financial, manpower or resources committed to countering the pandemic, I am pleased to see that many remain on track or have already been completed. And I want to thank all of the Government of Jersey employees across the entire public sector for their commitment, not only in com combating the COVID-19 pandemic and its economic impacts, but in keeping our government moving to support Islanders and deliver on our promises. It's been a challenging and at times difficult few months, and there are significant challenges ahead which we will address in the government plan. But so far, We've weathered the storm and I'm proud of our record of service to our island. As Children's Minister, I've worked to ensure that the health, safety and well-being of children and young people in Jersey have been our top priority during these six months. During the coronavirus pandemic, we launched the Children and Families Hub to provide extra support to families and in the first three months the Hub received referrals relating to 750 children. This service was a resource to provide information, advice, guidance, and where required, direct support to those children and families needing early help to offset the challenges posed by the prolonged absence from care and school and nurseries. To maximise the impact of the hub, we launched a cross-government campaign asking the community to be the eyes and ears of the vulnerable and to report health, wellbeing and safeguarding concerns. To best ensure the health, safety, well-being and learning outcomes of our children and young people during the initial pandemic response, we established a COVID-19 vulnerable children list with every identified vulnerable child having a lead agency and lead worker. We set up a temporary 24-7 child and adolescent mental health service inpatient unit for the children and young people who would have usually been managed in either the Jersey General Hospital or off-island as well as thousands of contacts being made with young people and their families by the professionals working across SIPES, a large-scale survey of the experiences of children and young people was jointly commissioned with the Office of the Children's Commissioner. And we're extremely grateful to the 2,105 children and young people in Jersey who shared their thoughts and feelings about the pandemic in this survey. In education, we face huge challenges, like many across the world in delivering quality education to children and young people during the pandemic. Schools were closed in March to curb the spread of COVID-19 and our priority focused on the health, safety, well-being and learning of our students. During this time, we were able to reopen schools to some of the island's most vulnerable children and those of our critical workers. Staff, parents and carers worked together to provide a coherent curriculum at home and for those as mentioned in schools. As the situation evolved, we were able to reopen successfully following strict safety policies before the end of the academic year with our Safe Return to School campaign. The Jersey Youth Service adapted quickly to ensure that the clear demand for a greater wellbeing service was provided through enhanced counselling and street level youth work. To ensure the health, safety, wellbeing and learning of students during the initial pandemic response, we supported schools to protect students through the psychology and wellbeing service, proactively making hundreds of calls to families to ensure that they were managing. A recovery curriculum was put in place, 
Wellbeing was paramount in this, with schools welcoming children back, making them feel safe and valued, re-establishing friendships and helping them learn new ways to behave, as we've all had to. Higher education students have also been supported by the student finance team. From logistical support to retrieving belongings left in the UK, with help from partner agencies like Jersey Post, to additional financial support for final year students, allowing them to return to university in the autumn term and by Skills Jersey to access online university resources. Additional support is being put in place for children and young people to address the loss of in-school learning during the pandemic. Most of this work will take place in the new academic year starting in September. The COVID-19 pandemic has presented major risks to the health and well-being of islanders. Those risks are still present. Yet, it's only when you stop to look back that you realise the magnitude of what we've achieved in such a short space of time. To best protect islanders, the government worked with external agencies and partners to develop and implement an island-wide pandemic public health strategy. This strategy has been continuously updated to meet evolving circumstances and greater knowledge of the virus. It has allowed for several new initiatives to be set up to preserve life, promote health and hygiene, and support the highest risk and vulnerable islanders. The Urgent Treatment Centre and GP Partnership, for example, the Nightingale Wing, which was built in less than four weeks, and the creation of a second station for our ambulance service in partnership with St John Ambulance. We delivered a community street triage as part of the Mental Health Crisis Prevention Service and established a safeguarding cell with 15 key agencies to address mental health and other safeguarding issues. Not forgetting development of a large-scale testing programme for the island including new testing sites, equipment, technology and staff, as well as a tracing function to track and trace cases of the virus and to control the spread in the island. We are continuing to plan and there's been significant collaboration from colleagues across health, policy and environment teams for a safe exit from lockdown. Relieving these pressures was crucial to securing sustainable funding for health initiatives that will protect and support islanders and their families well into the future. Our primary concern as we move forward is to support islanders to live healthier, active and longer lives during and after this pandemic. Thank you and stay safe. I am extremely proud of the work conducted by the Justice and Home Affairs Department which has involved being part of leading the island's response to the COVID-19 pandemic at both strategic and tactical levels. Throughout this period, paramedics, firefighters, the Jersey Field Squadron, police, customs and immigration, prison and health and safety officers have cared, safeguarded, protected and enforced on the front line each and every day. This work has involved a multi-agency approach in order to keep Jersey safe through stay-at-home enforcement, ensuring resilience within our ambulance service to deal with increased demand, management of the essential travel program, emergency planning, island-wide supply of personal protection equipment, workplace compliance, swabbing teams, safety measures within the prison, setting up and managing the COVID testing centres and keeping our borders protected. The department has also continued business as usual, for example, developing the new domestic abuse law, which will be brought before the state's assembly early next year, and increasing funding for the SARC to support victims of sexual abuse. We are attempting to reform the way in which tasers are authorised and deployed by the police. Feasibility studies have been undertaken regarding a future combined fire and ambulance station, and there's progression on electronic patient records for the ambulance service. Redevelopment of the prison is continuing and there is a greater focus on rehabilitation of offenders. We've launched the new Jersey variant British passport and preparations are ongoing concerning Brexit and the island's future immigration strategy. I have maintained my focus on supporting the emergency services and all frontline staff who often put themselves in danger, go the extra mile and deal with the most difficult and challenging situations. All to protect islanders, 
and to ensure Jersey is a safe place to live, work and visit. The first six months of 2020 have been dominated by the coronavirus pandemic and the significant impact it has had on everyday life, on society and on our economy. Falling public revenues and the rising public costs of dealing with the pandemic and its economic impacts mean that Jersey is moving into a budget deficit situation, which is likely to last for several years. This has meant there has been a need for a renewed fiscal strategy, which has to take this reduction in income into account. We will also need to reduce our expenditure where we can and borrow to fund the immediate costs of the pandemic response. We will have to take action to balance our finances with the aim of closing the deficit by the end of the period 2021 to 2024. One of the most important roles during the pandemic has been to respond quickly to the rapidly changing financial situation and support islanders and businesses through it. As we've moved into the recovery phase for the island, we introduced our fiscal stimulus package, which is providing timely, targeted and temporary support. We know there will be much more adaption to and investment in these challenging circumstances as we move through 2020 and into 2021. I am extremely grateful and proud of the way everyone within government and across the community has responded to the demands of the pandemic so quickly and professionally. The initial impact of COVID-19 on Jersey was extreme and immediate, affecting nearly every islander and every business. We recognise that keeping our economy working, protecting livelihoods and providing stable finances was essential to ensure Ireland's long-term economic, physical and mental well-being. As a response, we move quickly to put in place the biggest financial support package the island has ever seen. Through deferrals in GST and social security payments, the creation of a business disruption loan guarantee scheme and the special situations fund. Critically, we also introduced a government payroll co-funding scheme which has now supported over 10,000 claims with 63 million pounds worth of funds being paid out to date to keep islanders in employment. In July, we announced a series of fiscal stimulus measures designed to restart our economy in the aftermath of the pandemic, providing a much needed injection of cash into local businesses. That 150 million pound package includes 100 pound prepaid cards for every adult and child on the island. A proposed reduction in employee social security payments from 6% to 4% and a 50 million pound fiscal stimulus fund for capital projects, training and skills development. We also acted to address the practical ways that the pandemic was affecting businesses and islanders during the lockdown. We worked with telecoms companies to ensure that broadband capacity was increased to every premises on the island. We work with Jersey Business and other frontline organisations to understand the impacts of COVID-19 on employers and giving them a way to provide important input into our safe exit framework. We facilitated the continued provision of lifeline flights operated by Blue Islands to enable essential travel for medical patients, essential workers and those requiring travel for compassionate reasons. And we supported Digital Jersey with the swift transition to digital working allowing the state's assembly to be the first parliament in the world to meet completely remotely as well as supporting schools and delivery of online lessons and supporting remote working across a vast sector of the economy. Jersey has a robust and dynamic economy and it's because of that, because of the fortitude of businesses and islanders that we have been able to manage the crisis. So I would like to thank you all for your efforts and look forward to coming through the pandemic when we can return to normality and rebuild our economy once again. While our primary focus has been on the unprecedented risk of COVID-19 to Jersey, this does not mean we've ignored the ongoing challenges and opportunities presented to the island by Brexit and new global relationships. We've developed our Brexit unit into the new International Trade Unit, who manage extensive cross-government work reviewing the opportunities for Jersey from the UK's future trade negotiations. 
This ensures Jersey's interests are understood and effectively fed into the UK's discussions on a future EU-UK partnership and into the UK's negotiations of new trade agreements with countries like the USA and Japan. Ministers have continued to meet regularly throughout the Covid crisis to provide direction on these matters. Our London office is continuing to support the promotion of Jersey's constitutional position and interests through UK political engagement and I have continued my engagement with UK ministers and parliamentarians in recent months by holding frequent online meetings. In view of the UK's departure from the EU, resources to engage directly with EU member states have been enhanced in addition to those already provided for by our overseas offices in Brussels and Caen. Ministers have also continued to build Jersey's trade and cooperation links with countries outside of the UK and the EU by delivering the government's global market strategy. The Global Markets team achieved its target of negotiating three international agreements in 2020 and work on new agreements is already well underway. The team also represents Jersey at multilateral events including with the OECD and the Commonwealth, raising Jersey's profile and ability to engage with and influence key international stakeholders. The Financial Services Division continues to play an active part in supporting preparations for the next Moneyval assessment. They have also supported our vital financial services industry, which has shown its strength and resilience in these past months. This includes ensuring workable lockdown and restricted worker provisions for the financial services and legal sectors, and working with the JFSC and JFL to ensure the economic impact of COVID-19 on the financial services industry is understood and mitigations put in place where appropriate. I'm confident that despite the challenges presented by COVID-19, we are continuing to do the essential work to ensure our global reputation is upheld and our critical financial services industry continues to thrive as the key industry underpinning our strong economy. As I look back to the first half of 2020, it has been a challenging and difficult time for all of us, with many islanders affected in some way by the coronavirus pandemic. From a priority point of view, providing financial support for those people who needed it most was a key focal point. We improved delivery of income support and introduced new elements, such as the COVID-related emergency support scheme. For our business customers, we extended the deadline for local businesses to repay their social security and GST payments, providing a two-year deferral that supported businesses of all sizes. The customer and local services team have worked extremely hard during these challenging times in developing, implementing and administrating these various initiatives, all with the aim of helping to support our customers as quickly and efficiently as possible. Our priority has always been to stimulate the economy and going forward with the fiscal stimulus programme we are hoping to temporarily reduce social security contributions from employees from 6% down to 4%. All of these elements are providing timely, targeted and temporary support but of course we will have an impact on the social security fund. We are in very unusual times and we will need to prepare to change, adapt and potentially invest again to provide additional support as we move through the remainder of 2020 and beyond. I am proud of the way that all our teams have responded to the demands of the pandemic and want to personally thank them for helping to enhance the lives of everyone across our community. The first six months of this year have of course been dominated by our response to Covid. As Housing Minister, I worked to ensure that everyone in Jersey had a home to stay in throughout the lockdown. Right at the start, we set up an emergency housing team and they helped more than 200 people by providing them advice and helping them if they were at risk of becoming homeless to find alternative accommodation. We temporarily suspended evictions to protect tenants who'd lost their jobs and were falling into rent arrears. We introduced a rent freeze to protect tenants from economic hardship 
and we gave people the option of extending their tenancies if they wanted so that no one was forced to move during the outbreak. COVID-19 put a lot of things on hold but work continued in many housing areas and we've learnt a lot from this pandemic. Our experience during COVID-19 will be reflected in the Jersey Homelessness Strategy which will be published in September setting out our vision and priorities to tackle homelessness in the island. We're also going to create a new housing advice service early next year so we can improve the way we provide information to the public and provide active support for those as well. And the Housing Policy Development Board's work, which was suspended, will restart soon and their report will set out the actions we need to take to improve housing supply and affordability, including the release of surplus government-owned sites that can be used to build new homes. And throughout all of this, uh, Andium Homes have been on site delivering 700 new homes that will be finished in the coming years to help provide that housing supply. My department has kept the island running throughout lockdown. As well as the normal infrastructure, our roads and waste management, we responded to the exceptional demands of COVID-19. When the scientific and technical advisory cell concluded that Jersey needed more hospital beds, we built the Nightingale Wing. We have also commissioned the provision of testing stations at the harbour and airport and the installation of the on-island test processing facility at the airport. These are all works that have been delivered to tight deadlines with the limited resources, bearing in mind that growth housing and environment has also provided the majority of the track and trace personnel, working from offices that have been put together and equipped from scratch. And at the same time, we continue to deliver this government's major capital projects despite the disruption to supply chains. The demolition of the old swimming pool had to be temporarily halted because the asbestos contractor was from off-island. However, the works on mental health facilities have been progressing steadily with COVID constraints. This is the new Le Kennevay School. It was delivered on time and on budget by a local contractor with local subcontractors. It is an exemplar of the construction of low impact sustainable education facility, which will be the envy not only of the rest of the island, but much wider. It is opening in September and will be a testament to the problem solving and pragmatic approach of not only my department, but also the education department. And indeed, those people for whom the construction was not just a job, but actually a measure of the community and the island. Both this and the Nightingale Wings are illustrations of what can be achieved when government works in partnership with local contractors and isn't just a remote commissioning body. There are other examples of us working with partner contractors like the sewage treatment works and energy from waste. They may be less prominent, but they're just as important and we're just as proud of them. We are slowly adapting and improving Jersey's infrastructure to meet the needs and lifestyles of future generations. Work on the sustainable transport policy has continued and whilst it can be seen in smaller projects at the moment, the future impact sh should be greater than its parts and we'll see this feeding through into the next government plan.